yes, today I have the the um, possibility to read for you. Thank you very much to all of you. Um, I'm really not qualified to speak about it, but I pray to all of you that you inspire me to have uh, to transport a good feeling for this holy things here in the books. And um, so, that's the first number, six and nine. Mm -hmm. It's the first 96. I love it so much. Last time I was singing it, and uh, first number 96 is Tavai was me. Tavai was me. Najiva me. Tvayavina. Iti Vigyanya Devitwam. Nayama. Adulia, c'è il microfono chiuso. Sharanantikam. We are not loud enough. Is it all okay for the translation? Is set up? Yeah. Sound is also good. Rudy, sound is okay. We are missing you, but uh, uh, we hope you come soon. So. I had some some inspirations only in my heart. Maybe I can share it before I speak. Because when you see Raghunath Das Goswami and his life, it was so, so wonderful. I'm so I'm really not qualified to speak about. But I think sometimes this verse and the life from Raghunath Das is really the end of all material desires who are not serving Radharani, who are not serving the love game of Radha and Krishna. It is really so deep that I have not really no qualification to speak about it. But at first I like to pray to Guru Dev and to all of you <laughs> that you inspire me a little bit. Maybe I can speak about this point and that I can read for you. I am so thankful to all of you. I'm so thankful to my Guru Dev. And I'm so thankful to all of you because you are my brothers and sisters. And so I love you all and thank you. Thank you very, very much. I am yours. I am yours. I cannot live without you. You, O oh Devi, knowing this, please take me to your lotus feet. In the verses of Vilapa Kushumanjali, Srila Raghunata Goswami perceives his own Siddha Swarupa of Tulasi Manjari and is simultaneously blessed with transcendental devotional service in Radha and Madhava's pastime. When these visions vanish, he greatly laments and prays to Swamini's lotus feet for the attainment of these services. In the final nine verses that follow, he offers prayers to Swamini's lotus feet. In Swarupa Vesha, to Sri Radha Kunda, to the lotus feet, 
of Sri Govinda and to Sri Vishakasaki for the fulfillment of his desires. In this verse, Virahi Raghunatha takes complete shelter of Swamini's lotus feet. In order to attain them directly. Sharanagati means taking shelter or surrendering oneself. This is the starting point of sadhana bhakti. Without this, one cannot perform any bhajan. The more one surrenders, the more one advances. And the more one advances, the more one's heart is filled with feelings of surrender. Surrender is the practice and the goal of the devotees. And it is their very life force. It is their perpetual duty and only through surrender one can attain prema bhakti and the lotus feet of the Lord. Srila Raghunata Dasa Goswami relieved the highest stage of surrender, which means Tadaika Jivana. My whole life is his. This Tulasi is yours, yours. Without you, I won't survive. <laughs> this is the limit of surrender. This anxious self-surrender of Radha's maidservants, filled with feelings of mindness, cannot be found in the servanthood for the Supreme Lord. This Tulasi is yours. <laughs> this ever so sweet Mahavani is filled with the experience of Bhajana Rasa. The lives of the Madhurya Rasa devotees are blessed when they hear and chant these great words. How sweetly Tulasi surrenders her. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How sweetly she's surrendering, filled with feelings of mindness. This Tulasi is yours. She cannot live without you. Just as the bees become attracted, Sri Radha's lotus feet, after hearing these fragrant honey-like words, Tulasi offers lotus flowers 
that are sprinkled with the spiritual flavor of love at Srimati's lotus feet. Piriti Raset Dai Tanumana Diachi Tuhari Paya Tumimora Pati Tumimora Gati Prana Ananahi Chaya I have given my body and mind soaked in the juice of love to your lotus feet. You are my master and you are my goal. Sorry, sorry. My heart wants no one but you. It's, it's really taken me too much, sorry. Okay. How much the eternally perfect maidservants suffer when they are feeling separation from Sri Radha in Sadaka Vesha. They cannot live for a moment without her. They do bhajan themselves and simultaneously attract the eyes of all. They practicing the, the practicing devotees of the world which their painful eagerness to do bhajan. Can can I try to trans uh they do bhajan themselves and simultaneously attract the eyes of all the practicing devotees of the world which their painful eagerness to do bhajan. Through their own activities they have shown how to awaken a feeling of want by doing bhajan. <coughs> such a relish, a relish, such a relish, I don't get in my life. This can do only Raghunath does. <laughs> he is mercy, really. Ah, bhajan makes me happy. Therefore, I'm doing bhajan. But even in the dreams, I do, I do not miss Sri Radha. How eager Sri Raghunata is so, 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 no. so. Ah, with mind and heart, I'm telling you, I'm telling yours, I am yours, I'm yours. Touching your feet, I swear you to that I am yours. I cannot live without you. Deprived of your service, I have fallen on the bank of Radha Kunda. I tell you honestly, I cannot live anymore. Sri Raghunata can no longer tolerate the pangs of separation from Srimati. The poison of love 
and separation reaches his throat. His body, mind, and life airs, his life airs, are burning in the fire of separation. The Goswamis are the embodiment of love in separation, and Srila Raghunatha Das Goswami is the best example. Dasa Goswami, Goswami Rakata Kohone Na Yaya Niratara Dagda Hiya Viraha Vyataya Raghunatha Das Goswami is indescribable. <laughs> His heart always burns in the fire of separation. Day and night, this great priest of the Raganuga sacrifice weeps with tear-filled eyes on the bank of Radhakunda, without eating, without sleeping, torn apart by the pages of great love and separation. His heart, so anxious to attain Sri Radha's intim intimate service, Forgetting everything else, he simply desires um, the, eligibility. the eligibility to serve Sri Radha's lotus feet. Nothing else. How much hope he carries in his heart. <laughs> while taking full shelter of Priyaji, dear most place, the bank of Radhakunda, how many days, how many months, how many years have passed. Still, he did not attain the audience and the service of his Praneshwari. What's the use of still keeping this life airs that are burning in the forest of separation? <laughs> Within the physical frame. Najivami, Trayavina, I cannot live without you. Srila Raghunatha Das Goswami was completely showered uh, shower showered. Showered by the loving compassion of Sri Gaurasunara, the embodiment of the flavor love of God in separation. Vipralambagana Rasa Murti and for a long time he was one of the Lord's most intimate associates in his Gambira pastimes, as well as a personal witness of these unique pastime of ecstatic love of God. Advanced loving devotees can understand from this Kambira Lila how sweet the Lord is, how dear he is to the heart, and how powerful is the 
attractiveness of his love. How many anxious endeavors the devotees make to see him, and how full of sweet nectar is that silent and motionless swoon of ecstatic love in the end. <laughs> Even now the loving devotees become unsteady when they are rocked by <laughs> rocked, rocked, rocked by the high wave of the naturally savory rasa of love and separation as they remember the silence in the Gambira cell. The, follow the following pretty full sound is always entering their ears and breaking the deep silence in the Gambira like the dimmed chirping of a cricket. Where shall I go? What shall I do to get Vrajendranandana? Where is the flute playing lord of my life? Whom shall I tell? Who will know of my distress? Without Vajendra Nandana, my heart breaks. Raghunadasa is always immersed in this vast ocean of love and separation because he stayed with the Lord for so long in his pastime in Puri, sticking to him like his shadow. And the Lord was merciful, infused some of his great loving anxiety in him. In great anguish, Sri Raghunata prays to Swamini's lotus feet. How much longer can I live? Cast away from your lotus feet. In this life, I have never offered myself to anyone else's lotus feet. Understanding this, please quickly take this fallen maidservant to your lotus feet now. Hearing Raghunata Dasa's anxious cries, all the creatures in and around Radha Kunda are crying with pity. Sri Raghunata Das has given up eating and sleeping and is crying constantly his heart burning in the fire of separation. Although 
He has almost fainted. His lips can still tremble and say, Najivami, Trayavina, I cannot live without you. <laughs> Srila Rasika Chandra Dasa sings. <laughs> Do you like to sing it? <laughs> Jivane marane niti Tumi se amara gati Ami etamari ami tamari Tamavina e jivana Bujila Mukarana Vara Matra Bohi Sada Piri You are my goal in life or in death. I'm yours. I'm yours. I understood that. My life is useless without you. I simply wander around carrying this life as a heavy burden. <laughs> so, this was the, the um, verse. 60. 96. 60. 96. Uh, 96, yeah. So thank you that you are hearing me because it's so, uh, I cannot speak really good, but I'm happy that uh, to speak it under your ears is so wonderful touching me. Thank you by your blessings. Thank you very much. Maybe Guru Dave is there, or somebody like to speak about it. What I like about this Madhuri is how you uh, are reading to us with your full feelings. And that alone is already very nourishing for the heart, to feel your feelings. When you feel the separation of Raghunathas, of Tulasi, that is uh, making also my stone-like heart melt. And that is what is our Zoom Sangha is for, that we learn to feel each other's and we feel, of course, also the feelings of our dear Reverend Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj, who was writing his feelings in the feelings of Raghunath Das Goswami of Tulsi Manjari. So here we, I am so inspired that. Uh, to feel your tears, to feel that my heart is also becoming touched. And what I like, uh, I mean, there are so many beautiful, three beautiful points in here. But when uh, our dear Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya was in Gambira Lila, it's explained here that Raghunath Das Goswami got the mercy of Chaitanya. He was close with him, close, so close that he could feel him or her. He could feel Swamini also in Chaitanya. And how is Chaitanya in Radharani's path? Always in separation. Where shall I go? What should I do to get Brajenda Nandana? Where is the flute playing lord of my life? With whom can I talk about it? Who will feel my feelings? 
Chaitanya was in the feelings of Srimati Radhika. And then in the next paragraph, it's not that Raghunath Das is also feeling the same separation feelings like Srimati Radhika in Chaitanya was revealing to Krishna. Now, now, she, Tulasi, is deeply in her Swarup as a Manjari and she feels touched by the separation feelings that Raghunath has heard and felt before from Chaitanya. She feels now separation from Swamini. Just like Chaitanya felt that he or she could not live anymore without her Prajendara Nannana. Raghunathas or Tulsi Madri is so deeply now in her separation feelings and that is always the amazing thing that we feel like we try to feel and connect it by Raghunath's feelings of separation that is coming to us by our gurus, by the Akanda Guru Tattva, finally by Nityananda, by Ananga Manjari. And we feel separation from Swamini, just like Swamini is feeling separation from her beloved. I love this point. And I feel that you have much more separation feelings, Madhuri, and I pray that you also bless me with some separation oh, feelings. I'm only speculative. Um, um, I understand nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because I think only, for me, I can say that Raghunathas has his feelings, yeah? We are really... We have to become a little bit more humble that we can feel a little bit of even one drop. Huh? I can say only, I'm so thankful that we have such gurus, that we have such gurus who are presenting us these drops of bhakti. When you speak about Nityananda or so on, I'm so thankful to our Guru Devas, so thankful that I know they are nearest and dearest, and uh, so, and even to take one drop of all your lotus feeds, so it's helping me to get a little bit going on and get a little bit nearer to Radharani. I pray to all of you. <laughs> I can do nothing, I can really do nothing, but by your mercy, maybe we can get a little bit, I can get some drops of this bhakti. Radhe Radhe. Greetings from Vrindavan. Hey, Radhe Gopina. So uh, our Gurudev is here and he's totally relishing. And um, so I, I just wanted to say one thing and then really ask also our dear brothers and sisters to, to also share. This is such a, a beautiful verse and would say one of the most essential verses in our tradition, verse 96, right? And Gurudev always says that there are two ways of praying to Radharani, right? One is to say, I'm yours. And the other side of the coin is saying, you are mine. So Gurudev has often explained what the difference is between I'm yours and you are mine. Right? When we say I'm yours, that means I'm still desiring something and I'm still on my sadhak 
their platform or guru that says but the moment she becomes mine the moment she needs me all the time then we change the side of the coin and we can go more in our, our spiritual form so then I was thinking, but why is Raghunath Goswami in this special verse all the time crying, crying for her, you know, and saying, I cannot live anymore without you. Why is life airs coming out? Why is he choking? Why is he lying on the Radha Kund, you know? And then I felt now, after hearing this verse again, which was so beautifully read by Madhuri, that actually he's showing us that we need this intensity in our bhajan. We need this intensity in our spiritual life. We have to get to this point when there's nothing else anymore than her, right? Then, then it can happen for us. So I felt this moment now that actually this crying, this praying of Raghunath is big mercy for us to show us that it needs this intensity in our life. You know, in our bhajan has to become very intense and very one-pointed. It doesn't mean that we have to lie on the banks of Radha Kund. That's not the point here. The point is not that we imitate Raghunath as Kuswami, but we meditate on him. This is one time Gauravani was reading this beautifully in, I think, the Saints of Braj, and that sticks so much to my heart when he's saying not to imitate, but we can meditate on them. We can meditate on the Goswamis, on the Acharyas, and then their Kripa, the remembrance of them will enter our heart and it will strengthen our bhajan and make it more deeper. So I just wanted to bring this small, small, tiny thing into, into the room and really ask um, our dear brothers and sisters, as also Guru, this wish that you know, we share more on this a very, very special verse. And I would really like to ask uh, dear my dear brother, Tarun, I'm so happy to see after some time now, maybe Tarun, you can also say a bit about, you know, this importance of this verse and Raghunath Goswami's intense prayers here and what you feel. Well, <clears throat> of course, this is a very, 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 very high, high, high verse. And it's a beautiful prayer. It's a very beautiful prayer, but I say but, not to uh, lower the vibrations, but it is, like Gopinath said, it is an aspiration. It is, it is the highest Zenith, it is the highest stage uh, of bhakti anyone, any soul can reach. So this verse is like the ultimate limit. Raghunath Goswami is giving us the ultimate limit. The highest level of bhakti is this. And we can see from his, from his life that this is actually when he was shortly before leaving his body. He was in total separation, the fire of separation burn, burning him from the inside. So again, like Gopinath said, this is like an example and high aspiration for us to, to intensify our bhajan. But for me personally, when I read this verse, it's very nice, but I am very far away from, from this high, high, high sentiments, this I am yours and there's nothing else in this world, again, except for Adhika's lotus feet. This is our goal. This is Manjari Bhav Sadhana. This is the goal. But I think this is also, if we have, like you said, Gopinath, I'm so thankful that you said this. It's no need to naya, imitate these things. It comes naturally. So we go through, we go through these stages, and the biggest stage which we have, which is going even up to Bhav is Anartha Nivriti. So it's very important to have, like Gurudev always says, we have the goal, we have the, the, the end in our sight, in our vision, and in our endeavors. But it is very dangerous to rush into this 
feelings when they are not there. So the only thing we can do is to, like Madhuri nicely said, we have to collect the dust of the, of the lotus feet of the Vaishnavas, especially our Gurudev. And for me, this verse shows that it all, it all again, whenever I speak something, it comes to Guru Bhakti, because how can I reach this level of Raghunathas Goswami? I can only reach it when I feel this intense desire to be with my Guru Manjari. And this is the thermometer in my life. How, how far away am I from that? So I cannot, I cannot, I can only speak for myself. This is a very, very high, high, high goal. But for me, it starts to, to feel the closeness to the lotus feet of my Baba, of my Gurudev. And sometimes they are near and sometimes they are not so near. So I, I am honest in this matter. So it is very beautiful to have these Vilapa Kusumanjali Gurudev says, Vilapa Kusumanjali and Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, only those two are needed. And when we go through Anathana Riti, when we, when we lose our attachments more and more in a natural, sane and practical way, these feelings can start to take root in our hearts. So therefore, these sentiments, these high, high sentiments is really when you hear this, you know, I am yours. I cannot live without you. For me, it is very hard to say this prayer because I'm not even one inch there. <laughs> so much rooted in the material life, but it is the highest goal and it is a very nice inspiration to to go for that goal and to see this. And it is only reachable by Guru Bhakti by clucking on and hanging on to the lotus feet of Gurudev. This is my only feeling when that I pray that I one day I can also have these sentiments in my heart and, and, and be like this. But Radhika, she manifests herself in many ways. Like, I love to see Radha Kund. And then when I meditate on the photo of Radha Kund, when I see Radha Kund, I know that the lake is not different from Radhika. So for me, this is the entrance point when I try to meditate. I am I'm not in the in the platform of directly meditate about Radhika. I start with meditating on the photo of Radha Kund and on my Baba. And then these feelings go deeper and deeper and deeper the more time I invest. But for me, this is a very beautiful beautiful thing also in the explanation Baba is saying that the, the, this, this place, this Radha Kund is at, utmost important because there the highest mercy is flowing. So my, my entrance point into this beautiful sentiment is meditating about Radha Kund, about seeing the water, seeing the tears of Brahma, of Radhika and by this I can enter more into the sentiments, more and more. This is what I, I, I do. This is a practical thing because I'm not, I'm not experiencing this. There is no one else but Radhika. I want to experience this and therefore it goes step by step through all the stages. And when we reach that stage, this high stage, then we have sit up, then we have the perfection. Now we have, we have reached our perfection. This is the highest stage, but like I said, it's we have to go step by step in the association of Vaishnavas and under the guidance of Gurudev, and then we are guaranteed that we will one time attain this beautiful, beautiful goal. And this is what what I feel. Now, oh, one thing I wanted to share also, Gopinath, when you were sharing that uh, came to my remembrance. Why is uh, Raghunath Das Goswami always praying that I cannot live without you? It seems that in every prayer he is with her. In every prayer he is contacting Swamini with her services and... Uh, Always, he seems to be so close. She seems to be together with her all the time. But I don't remember in which verse, but lately it came that a Baba is writing, Ananda, this Babaji Maharaj, like 
Srimati Radhika and Krishna are experiencing their meetings every time fresh, like they have never seen her themselves before. Also, Tulsi Manjari or Raguna Das Goswami is experiencing her meeting with a Swamini like it was the first time. So I thought, wow, it's no wonder that this separation feeling is increasing, because it seems that every time she is doing the services and going back to her sadaka avesh, she's not aware that she has been there. And whenever Swamini comes back through the prayers and through the crying and through the longing, then it's new, it's a new meeting, it's a new and fresh meeting. And then that's the way how I can understand that he is praying, I cannot live without you, because he feels that he's not living with her, although he is living with her already, like to the utmost that we can never compare to. <laughs> that was only my meditation. Wow, oh, beautiful. That that inspires me to, to add something, um, Suniti. Um, Gordas Babaji, he's also speaking, he's a bridge boss, he's speaking on Vilaku Sumanjali in Vrindavan. And when he reads Vilaku Sumanjali, he sometimes adds some beautiful sequences in the Leela. And of course, that's also the realizations, you know, um, somebody like him has. So one time Radharani, Raghunatha Tulsi Manjari is crying, you know because she cannot find her. And then Radharani appears and said to us, why are you crying? I just left for a second. I just left for a second. Don't have to cry. So then I felt now up to li <laughs> listening to you, Suniti, that actually those prayers also intensify Radharani's love for the Manjaris, you know? Because Radharani feels, no, it's reciprocal between the Manjari and Swamini. So when we, when she feels our Najivamit Vaivina bhav, then she also melts, you know, and she sees any Vikripa Moy. But in that moment, even more Ras is flowing. Now she said, why are you crying? I just went for a second. I just disappeared for a, a split second. I Don't always you? With you. <laughs> <laughs> and same goes also, of course, with Gurudev, you know. Gurudev is always with us. It's just we we move. <laughs> like yesterday we were talking about the wild horse. It's only our wild horses which sometimes, you know, want to go for a ride. But he's always with us, you know. And he's always he's always close. And this is the beauty of you know of Sharanagati of surrendering to the lotus feet of Guru Dev. Because once he has accepted us, he will not let go. Also go also, that the, the point of Suniti, also, there are also several things coming. Mm, that first of all, why is he saying this? You explained it wonderfully, but I, I may add that also, you see, this, these prayers, when Raghunath Das Goswami is saying these prayers, we, at, I can speak for me, we can, I cannot understand that level of humility. So, mm. the humility of Raghunath Das Goswami is always seen as the perfect example, even by the other Goswami. So his, his humility is, re we think, yeah, why is he saying now, uh, where are you, where are you, I, I cannot live. But we think, yeah, he is living with her, of course. But still he plays the part here in this world as an Acharya, as a Brahm, as a Prayochan Acharya. He is the Acharya for our goal. And we can never, ever fathom the depth of his humility because he actually, he, Baba was the same. He was there, but he is so humble. They never ever show and they never ever teach by, by this useless example to always be with them because their humility is so intense and so high that they actually feel, even like you said, it's ever fresh, ever new, but they actually feel, I never saw her. I, 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 I'm not able to see her, even if he, she sees like this example when Rupa Goswami, what was this when when we saw the swing and Radhika was swinging and all these things and he, even Rupa Goswami didn't recognize it was Radhika. Sanatan Goswami sometimes didn't recognize it was Radhika. So they are so humble that they have not 
we cannot understand this. And the second point is we have to see these prayers. If Gurudev and Baba are explaining these prayers, they can go on for days and weeks and months. So there are so many layers, layers in these prayers. One, one very, very important point we have to always keep in mind that actually Acharya means those who teach by example. So Rad Raghunath Goswami, one of his main purposes is also teaching us, like mm. Gopinath said, to intensify our bhajan and to go mm. very deep in the subject matters. And sometimes he uses poetic measurements to to go there and to be there so these are many many layers he is teaching us by example he is the highest limit of humility so this is so many deep layer things then comes the rasa then come, there is the tattva aspect and the rasa aspect but his humility you'll see every one of us loves to eat every one of us loves to eat at least i love to eat so now imagine the following. Now imagine it is two o'clock <laughs> and you go to the Gambira and you eat the prasadam which was rejected by cows. So you feast on that. Can you imagine the humility and the austerity of that to eat that leftover prasadam which was rejected by cows? Then you can start to understand how humble and what is the position in Sadakavesh of Raghunath Swami. The, the prasadam was so spoiled, Mahaprabhu was so angry that why are you eating this? You know, if Mahaprabhu is already angry, then you can imagine. And Raghunath Swami was very blissfully eating that uh, <laughs> leftover, rejected by the cow prasad. So there we can see on what level. This, this Raghunath Goswami, Tulasi Mantra, this soul really is. So this was striking for me to, when I heard this, and now when this point, this was what I wanted to say. This is, his humility is, I think Baba in the beginning says that's unsurpassed. Unsurpassed, there is no, no Acharya on that level of humility. And Madhuri said, it is very great example for us, only by humility, we can do not peace on each other. Only by that can we, at one point, enter these sentiments. Thank you. I thank you very much, Tarun, for this wonderful explanation. I'd like to say from my heart why I chose this verse today. <laughs> Always when I'm reading it, and so... It is touching me. Very simple. I have no big explanations. I'm a very, very stupid person. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, I, I, when I feel it, that something, when I read this wonderful, beautiful um, perfection of uh, his devotion from Raghunathas, no? oh, very simply is touching me only. <laughs> and sometimes I have to cry, sometimes I have to sing and to make music out of this and out dancing. And so it, it, it simply it inspires me. And so sorry that I, I'm very, very fallen soul. And, but I can follow only a thing who is really entering my heart <laughs> and take me. <laughs> So, and uh, so this, this um, feelings who are coming due to that, my feelings are very low, really low bhakti. And I have very, very, I have to learn humbleness. I have to learn from all of you this, and I'm nothing in the perfection. But I'm only so thankful that I have so lovely friends like you. <laughs> that I have so lovely souls around me like our Gurudev and you, Tarun, and all, who are inspiring me to, to go on in my bhakti and to be attached 
to be really attached to it. So this is the only reason when I sometimes read this verse, I see such a high level. Wow. And oh, I, then I see I am nothing really. <laughs> oh no. What had, what he, what Raghunath does had a life, huh? What, uh, um, tapasya he made at first, no? then he met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, your tapasya is not right in the moment. <laughs> you have to learn another tapasya. Then he had to go back to his family to get social competence, to get, to get in the feeling of, of, um, love to everybody and love to, uh, to the social systems and so on. After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very, very happy when he learned. So, Another type of tapasya. And so I see this Raguna das Tulasi Manjari or Rati Manjari. So, wow, what can I say really? Nothing. But when they touch me, sorry, then I can um, go away. And this is what you said in the beginning. Oh, I'm really a falling soul. I like to have this attachment, yes. I like to have this, uh, this, uh, that my heart is, uh, touched by them. When the day will come, I am in my sadhana so good that I touch them too. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, sorry. I need you all your mercy. I need your blessings that I can touch in love Radharani and all my deep friends too. And on this stage, I'm not. Yes, I know I'm not on this stage, but I'm on the stage to be, to search for, be touched in the moment. Sorry, sorry. Gobinat, can I say just one thing more? Yes. Of course. Of course. Um, when I just heard this from Madhuri, actually there is this beautiful secret about all these prayers. Mm. We have to always see that every word of Raghunath Das Goswami, for example, or Rupa Goswami, but our Prem Acharya is Raghunath Das Goswami, so I use him now as an example. So we have always to remember that every word they write and say has so much power, so much mercy invested in these words. It is like I said this quite a few times already. It is like eating the Mahaprasadam in a mental way. So, so all these words, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya, all these words we have to make, we have to digest these words. They are so potent. There is this one example. When Mahaprabhu said there will appear soon some very, very, for, a very high class soul, his name will be Narutam Das Thakur. So this I find very interesting because he went to this river. I'm not good with the names, but he put some, he said, I will put all my prema in the, Suniti knows the river, in the river. And then when, when this soul is taking bath in that river, all this mercy will go into the heart of that soul. Mm -hmm. So and then Narutam Das Thakur came and took bath there and he took all that love and we can see from his songs, from his realization. So this is the same principle. Like Mahaprabhu put all his mercy in that water, in that container. So the Acharyas put all their love and mercy and power and everything you want to say in the words. So these words, these prayers, these verses... They are the containers of their mercy and their power and their realizations. And therefore, when we read them, we read them once. And Gurdjieff said he read them 50 times because they are never going empty. This will never be stale and boring because the Sanskrit is so much touched by the spiritual energy of these souls like Raghunath Das Goswami. It will always have that effect. But we have to be able to, at least I am not always on that level, to be able to have this effect on us. So therefore, we also need a container. And this is our heart. If our heart has too many holes, this mercy from these containers they send to us, they shower us with, it will not stay in the heart. So we have to take care that the heart has 
not enough holes, so to speak, metaphorically, so we can keep that investment because all these words have so much power. Like you said, Madhuri, you just has to you just have to read this verse and then you want to cry and you want to sing. So now go to a literature professor and explain to him this. They cannot explain why, but we can, because all this energy and this love is in these words and we resonate with this beautiful, beautiful verses like Mahaprabhu put this power in the water for Narada and Das Thakur, the Acharyas put all their power in these words for us. This is what just came to me. Jai Ho. Jai Ho, thank you. Narada and Das Thakur is another great example of this intense crying and longing. And he just missed by a split second he missed, and he sings that in his songs, you know, I was just reading this morning the Anilo Prema Dhana, where he's crying, where is my Rupa, where is my Sanatan, where is my Swarup Damodar? And he was so close to Mahaprabhu's time, but his intensity, I was just feeling now that why Gora Lila is so important for us, you know? I felt like why are they crying? Because from Gora Leela, we can enter Braja Brahm. Oh. So that's what you feel with Raghunath Das, because Swanarotan Das Thakur in their songs and their prayers, they know who Mahaprabhu was and why he came. So Gurudev, what do you feel? Without Gora Leela, we can experience I'm Braja Brahm? Very much in ecstasy. <laughs> I'm very much relishing. I have no word to explain anything. I'm here with me to like anything. <laughs> Thank you, Madhuri. Please help me also that I can stay always like this. Not I need all of your blessing to grow myself. Feel. I always there, but now I want to listen on the because you are flowing. And when I want to live in this spirit, this is my desire. I don't want to share anything. You all are sharing more better than me. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Thank you. So, Gurudev, you become many mouths now because we only speak what you give. No, I also take, I also steal. I am sharing their margins to you. I am not divorced, nor any realization. I am not in my life. <laughs> their mercy and all of your Vaishnava mercy. That's it. And I'm lucky. I feel very proud and lucky. <clears throat> our our Guru Dev is the best example of Trinado Pisunichina. <laughs> of I real think... Guru Dev, is this the key? <laughs> Are you showing us the key? Duranga Sundar Prabhu, please. I, I miss to hear your voice today. Is this the key to Nada Pisunitina? 
is Gurudev showing us it in many ways all the time? Yes, this is the beautiful ornament of Gurudev and all pure Rasika devotees. This ornament of humbleness, like Tarun explained very nicely. Yes. Humbleness is actually the sign of love, natural humbleness. And the more humbleness is present in the heart, the more pure emotions and love are coming in the heart. The more pure emotions are coming, the more humbleness is manifesting. So, this is the path, and this is the necklace which Krishna Das Kaviraj is celebrating, glorifying, and advising all devotees because to wear this necklace, because this is the most precious jewels present in that necklace. And this verse is one of the flowers from bouquet of Lamentations of Raghunath. And like we all know, he is watering with Anjali, with the tears. But these tears are not ordinary tears from conditioned soul. This is a premika tears, but not even premika tears, mahabhav tears. Because Raghunath is always in the kingdom of Mahabhav, like Anathadas Babaji very often mentioning. And when I hear this kind of expression of emotions, We can see how eager is Raghunath for Swamini. And from that eagerness, painful separation is coming. And this painful separation is a praying for direct service. Yes. Who can who can make such kind of prayers? Baba is saying here very shortly, someone who is completely immersed in the sense of you are mine and I am yours. He is saying actually I am yours. But who can say so strongly I am yours? Only the person who is on the platform, you are mine. So in the Raghunath's heart, this concept, emotional concept, or rather, you are mine, allowed him to say, I am yours. It's wow. different conception if devotee doesn't have so strong, I am yours, but he has just, I'm uh, you are mine, but he has just, I'm yours. Pray prayers will never be so sweet, so passionate also, so humble. These lamentations is ocean of lamentations, festival of lamentations. And maybe you will remember yesterday somehow there is a connection actually from creation zoom sangha we were reading the words i forgot 37 or something like that and baba is saying very nice instruction actually all goswamis especially our prayojana like tarun said prayojan guru they lamented over Radhika so severely. And the neophytes, 
has to lament over Raghunath. Mm. This is the way how this strong, pure, transcendental feelings will be infused in Sadaka. And this is the process, and this is the way. And maybe this is the goal also. Because in the moment when these feelings be infused in the heart, a goal is attained. Because such kind of personalities, they have only one thing to infuse in our hearts. Their love for Radhika. Yeah. So the, <laughs> so the process of lamenting over them, like um, Gopina mentioned Narottam Das Thakur, Oh my Rupa, Oh my Raguna, where are you? Oh my Swarupa. This is the process. But we have to lament for Narottam. Mm. Knowing his Swarup, that he is beloved Dasi of Radhika. We have to lament, we have to love Raghunath. Like Madhuri is expressing very nicely his love. Because without love for Acharyas, we will not be able to remember always them. And by remembering them, naturally, we will lament over them. And that will bring us to the lotus feet of our beautiful Swamini. Then we can say, Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Najiva Metvaya With strong, because we will be charged with their purity, their humility, their love, will be charged. And then Swarup will bloom. Like Tarun Baba said, in the Bhava, then it will be everything crystal. But not from my Bhava. <laughs> from someone who has real Bhava. Then listening these beautiful words, words of Raghunath Bhatt and Antadas Babaji also will shower us from all sides. Thank you very much. I'm wow. sorry. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Goravani, where are you? Rade, Rade, unfortunately, is still in the material world. <laughs> I don't believe. I don't believe. <laughs> Actually, wonderful words, Goranga Sundara and uh, Tarun Baba. It's very nice to have you here again after such a long time missing you, your association. You are for us the connection to Anandadas Babaji's mercy. Mm -hmm. So. Don't let us blood out so long, please. <laughs> it's a wonderful verse, actually. It's like Tarun Baba said, it has so many different layers. I'm not able to understand. But one thing, I have some idea maybe, or some feeling at least. Not idea, maybe more feeling. Like Tarun Baba said, the mercy is inside. In this verse, 
The mercy is inside the whole Shakti of our Swamini comes down to the succession to us. The whole Shakti is inside that we may actually come to this point if we don't try to imitate, but really try to follow. And actually, what is humbleness? In love, we follow our great examples who made the way already. And we don't try to find our own way. Like if you want to go to a high mountain, very high mountain, you may die if you try to find your own way. Better to follow the path which is already seeked out or was already used by great examples. So humbleness shows that we follow, like Goranga Sundara said, we follow these Mahajans. And then one day it will be able also for us. One day, who knows when? Who cares when? We are on the way. So what we can do, like Tarun Baba also said, we can go on. Sometimes we may need some air, like <gasps> and maybe we need a little short break and then go on again. But the point is to go on, go on and go on and go on. And I see that the more near the goal comes, the more rati will come up. Because then you really want to reach it. In the beginning, it may be far, far, far away, like Tarun Baba said also, so high, so high. But our Narayan Maharaj said, you have to, you really have to want it. And only if you really want it, you can get it. So if we are on the way and we reach some uh, parts of this goal already, like if you go in Himalaya, you have these different stages where you can come through and then you stay a night and then you go to the next level and so on. So we have to go on and reach these levels. And if we want to reach this level here, this is the last, the last hut before the real goal. I am yours, I am yours also shows that actually, like Raguna does say in his, in his prayer here, Pririt Rasete Dali, I have given my body, I have given my mind. And they were soaked in the juice of love. What does this mean? Actually, I used my mind, I used my body, I used everything in this realm, and I soaked it in love. I soaked it in your seva. My sadaka was used in your love. So I made that. I followed this path. But now, my beloved one, I cannot live without your direct seva anymore. After all, Rati Manjuri is not from this realm. She's just showing us. She's just an example for us. So we may not understand, but we may feel, like Maduri said, we may feel that this is the right path to follow. And maybe it's enough to follow this feeling. And go on, get more and more involved. Rati is growing, and you are going faster.
and faster, more encouraged and more encouraged. And then we may also pray in this similar attitude one day. And then we may really feel that actually you are mine. And because you are mine, I am yours. Because I don't want to be yours that you have to take care of me. I want to be yours that I can take care of you. And if you are giving me the print, the mark, then I know that you need me, you are mine, and then I'm yours. So beautiful. I think both, both Goranga and Goravani just really nailed it, I would say. I am yours and you are mine are the two sides of the same coin. So we can flip it all the time. <laughs> but they go together. Mm. It's not possible. As Goranga Sundar said, you cannot say this. I'm yours if you don't have this feeling that you are mine. And I also feel this in our relationship to our Gurudev. We should also develop that feeling that we can say sometimes, Gurudev, don't bother, don't worry. I am there. I will take care. I will do this seva for you. And at the same time, of course, Gurudev is doing all the time for us. But if Gurudev is mine, I'm his anyway, right? That's, that's already a sign. But I have to also develop that feeling that, no, Guru, that you are mine. Guru Manjari, you are mine. I want to be there for you. So when you are taking care of Radharani, when you're taking care of Swamini, I'm also there behind you every step. I'll be not letting go of your uh, dupatta. I will, I will keep tight on it. I will follow you everywhere. Right? Gora Sundar? Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I hope in that. So beautiful. I see what I feel in this verse is um, this is the biggest yakya one one can do because he is in this for me he is offering his false ego. And when we give up this false ego totally, from this point on, we, we grow with the real ego. And then we can say, you are mine. As long as there is a, a little false ego identification with some wrong, we cannot say, you are mine. From this point of view, it's not possible. And in that moment, we give it up. And this is what he is teaching us, what Darun Baba said. This is a teaching. He is showing how to give up the false ego totally. He is offering that to Swamini. Swamini, I'm yours. Take all of my what I think I, this is myself, take it. And then I will go in the next step and then I can take care of you. In that moment, that will happen. And this is, this is, this is actually for me, it is a yakya, what he is praying. He is offering all wrong identification 
actually what what he is identifying himself to this moment as himself he is offering take it it is so beautiful i i like maybe to say what helps us is to feel how sweet it is how sweet radha's love is there so and when we taste this wonderful beautiful sweetness of radha then we can offer our ego because this touch allows us that it tastes wonderful to give up our ego <laughs> How is it, Gurudev, when ego is not there anymore? What happens then? <laughs> yeah, you are my. The that means they in our rupa is like a shadow to the sun under the shelter of our guru mandiri. But actually, we cannot give up our ego. This is not possible. It's not possible that I can give up my ego. This is not possible. It has to be taken. It has to be changed by the mercy of Guru Manjari. She will show us our real ego. And then if you have something really valuable, Why you should stay with some useless thing, which is just giving trouble, just always bring you in some dif difficult situations. And uh, we all have our experience with the false ego. Why we should follow our own ways of thinking, our own goals and all this stuff, which is bringing us in trouble all the time. If we understand that because of the offering, the very humble and sweet offering of Guru Manjari, who's showing us some other way, who's showing us, but this is not you you want to follow. This is not your nature. This is your nature. It's much more sweet. Look how sweet. Just see. Then We will follow the sweet way, and then in this way, the false ego is step by step gone. We will forget, because if you have something really cherishable on the blade, very nice taste, why you should take things which are not so tasteful? No more use. I remember, I remember a time when I, when we were still in Dole in the festival, I was talking to Gurudev and about Sita Deha and Sita Pranali. And sometimes people say, whoa, what are you doing with your Sita Pranali and your Sita Deha? You are, what is the use of that right now? So Gurudev, he, he nicely said to me, you just put that in a little box and then one day, This little box is like a treasure box. It comes out. So when, when I was, I was many times, I was asked, asked, well, what are you doing practically with your Sita Deha, with your Sita Pranali? So I was always saying that it, it always depends on how, how advanced you are. I can only say for me, this, what you said, Goravani, the transformation of the ego starts with this little sheet of paper of the, with this information. So they asked me, what are you doing with the Siddha Pranali? Are you dancing with Radhika? Are you giving Krishna Prasadam and all these things? Yes, at one point, this is our goal. This will be there. But right now, the only thing I can tell them, this information Baba gave me, my name, my dress, my form, etc., etc., it gives me a sort of belonging 
and a sort of identification, like a like a what is it called? This personal as wise uh, ID passport. Card. It's like the passport of the spiritual world. He gave me all the information and alone this, just these words, just this paper, it gave me so much uh, satisfaction in the, in, the, in the kind of that I can identify myself. Even if I have a gross German body, I still have the information that actually this is not my real body. My real body is this. And let me tell you also something which I heard many times from Baba. You see, Krishna's body is of Svarupa Shakti. The spiritual world is made of Svarupa Shakti. It has no, no touch of the material realm. So, and then it is said, Krishna's name is not different from him. Krishna's form is not different from him. Krishna, nothing is different from him. So the same, exactly the same applies to our Siddha Deha. Our name is not different from us. We are that name. Our form is not different. So there is no difference. When we meditate on our name as a Manjari, it is the same principle because Manjari body, the Siddha Deha, is not from Tatashta uh, Shakti. It is spiritual. It is of Svarupa Shakti. So if we meditate on the name, this alone, only the word alone has so much potential that it grows inside you like a tree. So the words in itself are so powerful. The dress, the form, the seva, all these things are connected with and imbued with Svarupa Shakti. So I may have not realized how I beautiful I look with my long hair and all these things, but I know. It's there, and it, I have it written, and I've I, Baba told me in my right ear. So this is so much ensuring and so much helping only to know that this is there, that I am this. And as we progress in the life, in the journey of bhakti, these things will reveal themselves according to our surrender, according to our sharanagati. But please, this is so, I find it so helpful for me only to meditate about our, our Manjari name and our form, Guna Rupa Lila. All these things will be revealed when we meditate. Don't take it for cheap. This name has so much power. Your dress has so much power. Your form has so much power. Just to read this every day, how you look like, what is your name and where you belong. This is so powerful. It is really helping me very much practically although i don't know really how i look <laughs> but this is so it's so i just wanted to tell you this is so powerful uh, that to use this as a passport yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> if i can just add something to to this, what uh, now Gauravani was telling and, and Tarun was explaining so nicely that, you know, it's much more sweeter to meditate on being a Manjari than to being a Gopinath in this body, you know, with all his uh, anarthas and <laughs> all his <laughs> craziness. So it's nicer for my ego to go there, right? So Tarun really, this is really again, brought it very much to the point, you know, this is the biggest gift for us to get out of this material bondage. You know, that that information we got to Gurudev's mercy can help us to transform. But at the same time, I was also feeling that what Gauravani was saying, no, we can't give up this ego, no? It's so glued to us, oh man, it's so tiring sometimes. Then I was looking, how does Gurudev deal with this situation? How does it deal with all our egos all the time, no, 24 seven? I bring Gurudev, I have this problem, I'm this, I'm that. Then I see actually what he's doing. He's Prema Dana. He's flooding with Prem. He's, pr he's flooding us with Prem. And then what happens if you flood so much, then the ego drowns, you know? And once it's drowned in the ocean of Prem, it's still there, right? But what can it do, you know? It's just covered by Prema. And this is what Gurudev is doing with us. And that's what is. What, the, what we feel all the rustic Vaishnavas are doing, they're so compassionate and they're full of love 
and they're flooding us. And this is the way, you know, to come out of this false ego, to drown it, and also to engage ourselves in devotional practice. No, the basics which we learn when we join Shravanam, Kirtanam, Pada Sevanam, these are words, but the star on side, like these are actually these are like key aspects to practice, you know. If we fill our ears with the holy name, if we chant the holy name, if we engage ourselves in seva, then we can drown this false ego in the ocean of pain. Kovinat. So, yeah. Kovinat. This is so nice. One thing also, sorry if I'm yeah, rambling. Uh, I have experienced several times when you when you get Siddha Pranali, you get your nature also. You, the Baba or Gurudev or Narayan Maharaj, they also give you your nature. And what I find extremely mysterious and very, very special is that actually the nature you have in your Siddha Deya is nearly exactly the same as in the material world. But now comes a big, big but. If you use that nature in the material world, it will bring you nothing. But if you use that nature in the spiritual world and for spiritual things, it is very, very helpful. Let me, let me make an example. Baba told me my nature. I will not tell exactly, of course, but I can make, a, I can make an example. I have the ability in my nature to go deep into things, very deep. So I can use this nature in two ways. I can go very deep into useless things and I can go very deep into very useful spiritual things. But this nature Baba said and gave is 100% there in all of you. All these natures, it has to be used just in the right way. And this is the what, what Gora, Gora Sunna said. This is the yapya we have to do. We don't have to use that nature to satisfy our material existence, at least to some point we can, but this nature has to be turned and changed to the spiritual nature. And I many times experience these things. I go very deep into a subject matter and forget the spiritual nature, but actually we have to go the other way. We have to use our nature, our guru-given swarupa, our nature, our bhav, to do the right in, the, in this right direction. And I, I spoke to many devotees and they all said the same thing. Actually, the nature the Gurudev has given me in my Siddhartha is very, very, very similar to my material nature. But I just use it wrongly. We are so, so good using things wrongly. So it's Atma Nivedanam. Mm. We are giving ourselves. And like you said, Gopinath, the nature of this material world is if your false ego is high, the real ego is low. But if your real ego is higher, then the false ego is low. Because it's always leveling, right? We have two sides in the material world. So I just wanted to make a picture in this, uh, that actually, if we keep up our real identity, then the false identity has to go down it, and, and it has to drown in Brahma. So there's no other way. Like Guru that says, make your spiritual line longer. He always says, no, make that line longer. But the material line is there, right? But if that goes longer, longer, so automatically, you know, it overtakes it. And then we are on the right track. So we have to make that, that line longer. And I love this Gurudev always emphasizing, you know, make your spiritual line longer. You know, and this is what Darren also said, like what we receive, we don't have to, don't, we shouldn't take it for granted. You know, this is actually our, as Gora, uh, Gora Sunda said, no, we need, the car needs petrol. Right? And the diksha, the, the, the pranali, that's the diesel that keeps us going. So we need, need it, you know, it's, it's essential for us.
Brother, may I say something? Uh, from these words of Raghunath, we can see that he is praying from to, to Radharani from his Sadaka wish. And this prayer is so sweet because he never forget his Swarupa wish. In the same time, he is absorbed in Swarupa wish. So, in the case of pure devotees, Rasik devotees, we can see that their outside appearance, or we say identity, outside identity, is merged in a spiritual identity. So in that way, we cannot say the pure devotee doesn't exist, <laughs> because we can see, touch, embrace him, hear him, see him, but in the same time we have to be aware that his identity is merged in his spiritual, we say Swarup, or spiritual identity. And Raghunath is showing that in, on the stage of Baba, same things is happening. Because he is going Bhava, Prema, Mahabhava, outside. Bhava, Prema, outside. But his outside is not mine outside. <laughs> when he is going outside, he is coming back on the stage of Bhava. And this is in that stage, all false ego of him. Let's say false, but it's wrong word <laughs> for Raghunath. His identity is merged, still is merging in Swarup. And because of that, he is lamenting so strongly. And through his viraha, through his lamenting, he is showing to us, Sadaka, what does it mean, complete Sharanagati, complete surrender. Through Viraha, Prabhupada, you know all, Prabhupada very often said, first Vipralamba, then Milana. And Raghunath, like perfect Acharya for Prayojana, is showing what does it mean Vipralamba or Viraha. Fully in love with Swamini, fully aware of Swarup, like Hurdasi, and fully lamenting when I'm not in direct service. Mm. Fully lamenting. And this full lamenting for direct service is actually showing the sadaka who is remembering his lamentation. Deeply in the heart is remembering and feeling his intensity of lamentation. What does it mean to fully surrender? So this is connection between viraha, lamentation, and full surrender. Out of love, of course, not out of fear. Because there is two types of surrender. Out of fear, if I put gun in someone, he will say, okay, I'm surrendering to you. But there is no love. But if the person is in love, naturally and automatically, he will use his free will to surrender. So this is the proper using of free will because I choose my loving goal. And then by following those who are already on that path, I'm trying to learn the path of Sharan Agati. Yeah. 
then tears can appear from the Atma, Krandana, from the Atma, real tears, not visible sometimes outside, sometimes visible, but one of the ornaments of devotees also that he is very expert in concealing this deep, deep, deep genuine feelings. Because he is fully surrendered, Sharanagati. This is my understanding. Because, and this full Sharanagati is possible when the bodily identity, by the mercy, by the Kripa, merge in the spiritual identity. And this is for the Sadaka. I'm talking for the Sadaka, on the Sadaka level. No. So that's rather. Yeah.